I, I really am excited about the singles yeah. this week. There's a wide variety of them. Um, let's, let's go in. right in. Yeah, let's go to Nail Tech by Jack Harlow. Man, it's, it's going to be interesting to hear. In. It's going to be really interesting to hear like a fuller like Jack Harlow project come out probably mm -hmm. later this year or something like that. Just because I think we saw, I mean, obviously with Industry Baby, the Lil Nas X song really popping off right there. But um, I didn't. I don't know if we ever got the chance to review the 2020 album that he did, but Same overall... Action. I don't think we did because it was right when COVID hit and everything, when it was released, I believe. Um, I know we did the Weekend uh, album then and some other stuff, but um, I mean, What's Poppin' blew up like crazy um, the past two years or so. And then obviously Industry Baby and some other things and um, some stuff that he's been featured on and whatnot. So he's really blown up the past few years. Yeah, point is, kids got talent. Like that's the the. Yeah, point is, point. he's he's good. Like, it's it's funny when I tell my members and stuff. Oh, you know Jack Harlow's white. They go, what? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I One show of those. a picture. It's exactly. It was, I was actually this happened like maybe a few weeks ago. My members like, really? I go, yeah. Yo, it's it's, it's like for. For every um, little dicky we have to put up with, we get a Jack Harlow. So it's, it's a little bit of a give and take. <laughs> um, very true. But anyway, it's going into the single of Nail Tech. Um, it's a decent track, actually. Um, it's hard, really? you know, you have yeah. that, you know, thing of you blow up with a couple songs, then you, it's really hard to, like, try to one-up yourself in that way to get something that will also blow up or, you know, get people off of you saying, you know, you're a one-hit guy or whatnot. Just like Lil Nas X, but, you know, that he has proved time and time again that he can, you know, outshine the haters. But I actually think Nail Tech is a good, a good track with the way the production is. I mean, it's tried and true trap at the end of the day, but like it's decent. It has like the uh, little, I like to call them the RuneScape trap horns. So it's like little eight bit sound horns in the background <laughs> that some guys like to do. And I actually don't mind it with it because um, it can fit the certain styles and moods of, of certain tracks, and it definitely fits nail, nail tech for sure. Um, and yeah, his flow is really good. Yeah, I can really vibe with it. His flow is really, really good. And to know like these are the kinds of guys who only get better later on throughout their careers oh, yeah. is just really going to be exciting to see. And I, I like the sort of muted digital sound that you're getting from some trap music now i've been talking about it for years this is something that will at least help move trap a little bit forward for a couple of years give it a little bit more of juice because um oftentimes the genre can get stale more on that in a couple of weeks when we drop the state of music 2022 uh yeah. podcast that we usually do every single year um but this is a really solid track i really liked it um i want to move on to the next one because i think the next one's very interesting yeah, we have um, Silk Sonic. We have Love's Train, which is a cover of a uh, co-function song. And um, I think it's, it's actually a nice little cover rendition of it. I do. For some reason, I feel like Silk Sonic gets a lot of hate um, for like quite a bit of people. At least people that I've talked really? to and interacted with um, for some reason. Um, well, obviously, a lot of people, we both really like it. But I think there's a lot of people that hating it for some reason at least i encountered that a lot towards the tail end of last year myself but i absolutely love this cover this track it's great i really like it yeah silk sonic continues to kind of be the ones doing the most old school funk kind of thing yep. that can be done in contemporary music of course is the duo of anderson pack bruno mars um kind of working together in that regard i yeah, because this is a cover of a Con Function song. They just came off of releasing their Silk Sonic debut record. There's no real need for them to release new music, although I'm sure no. they both could. Um, and that Silk Sonic record was just under 40 it's minutes phenomenal. long. Above 30, under 40. Really good. We made it one of our top albums last year, and yeah. it's very likely to get a Grammy nomination this year when it comes around. It just kind of came out late last year for the Grammy nomination mm -hmm. cycle, like the Grammys matters. But... um. I, I guess I'm really interested because to me, I felt like, especially last year in the come up to Silk Sonic, that it was going to be one of those artists. They were going to be one of those groups that transcends different age groups, different people liking them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, like, what, what, who, that so I, I've like, who didn't both. like it? I've gotten people that like, who are very older, who really like it a lot. And like, I've been talking to them about it. Um friend the show tyra you know whose daughter is very khalil she loves silk sonic we were talking about it saying you know she grew up with that 
with funk and everything, and she loves Anderson Park, and we were talking about that for a while. Really liked it, but then there's some people that just genuinely didn't or didn't like it too much, which I was kind of surprised. Um, I don't know if they just didn't like the vocals of it or didn't like they just don't like funk, maybe thought it's too much of a throwback with it. But I always I know I mean this podcast, you know how we both feel about it. I absolutely love it. And I like the, I actually really like this cover with the way they do it. Uh, it's making me more and more of a Bruno Mars fan because I want to hate on Bruno Mars as much as I can, but I can't when he does Silk Sonic because it's so damn good. Uh, and his voice and the vocals and everything are fantastic with it. It's, good. it's a good track. So. Yeah, I, gener- I genuinely enjoyed it. I would like to hate on Bruno Mars for it, but I ultimately can't because it's I really cannot, solid. Dude. Um I- <laughs> Shout out to Super Bowl drummer Anderson Pack over here. Uh, <laughs> that was his random gig. <laughs> My favorite thing of the Super, Super Bowl was yeah, to see Anderson Pack. Because I see, see a dude on drums. I'm like, I know that smile. That's got to be Anderson Pack's smile. And then it pans to him. You know, he's just cheesing. I'm like, yeah, that's definitely Anderson Pack. That is super random. But I like the cameo. It, it annoyed me that people didn't know who Anderson Pack was. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll move what? on. That's, Jesus. That's, that's ridiculous. Anyways, um, we have new music, not just a cover, but like new, new music. We have Magic featuring Mustard by Vince Staples. The first uh, single to come off of what is presumably Vince Staples' next album, uh, Ramona Park Broke My Heart, uh, likely coming out <laughs> later this year. Um, so, for some fun, it's, it's a funny title for an album. <laughs> yes, I, it, it's going to be most likely like a Vince's more like R&B-ish, like... De- yeah. God, there I go again. Like neo pop trap and be kind of mm-hmm. pivot. Um, there was a song in the Vince Staples like self titled project where it's like the one feature that is a little bit reminiscent of this like kind of pivot. Uh, think take me home maybe. Yes, take me home. That's exactly what I'm thinking of. Um, yeah. Although this doesn't have the female vocalist in it. It's just sort of like Vince sort of doing the singy trap and beat kind of thing which i think he's growing into i think he's getting better at there's definitely like growing into it in his career i'd say earlier in his career it wasn't necessarily my cup of tea from him but it's getting a little bit better um it's not quite yeah. that like yeah it's not quite that um mix of it that like drake has for example where he's like singing and rapping nor do i want vince staples to resemble anything like drake so um that'll be interesting but overall i thought the beat was good it was like a decent track yeah oh, it's just for me I understand what he's trying to do. Like he's, you know, you, you try to always experiment and move on, you know, move forward with your with your career and everything. It's all right. I just don't think it f- suits his style as much, especially if his voice is the issue. Like he I is agree. really good at his flow. His vocals are good for rapping and for spoken word and stuff. But for this, it just doesn't suit him that much. It's hard, hard for him to do it. I guess would be the best way to say it. But um overall I, I like the beat i like that he's trying something different with it but i think he can he can improve upon it if he keeps trying to experiment and you know use more of his vocals and try to get it out it's just the way that it's done in this track is leaving me left me wanting a bit more and whatnot but it's it's a step in the right direction with it it'll be interesting to see how it sounds in a full project as well yeah I'm interested to see if he can bring on collaborators as well to yeah. kind of bring in that singing aspect that um, yeah. Vince doesn't necessarily need to do. He's a, he's a rapper, like, first and foremost when it comes to the music sense of things. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, we got Naturally by Tinashe, another uh, artist we liked last year in the neo-pop kind of space. And uh, this is a little bit slower than a lot of things from 333 that came out last year. Mm-hmm. But I still thought it was a pretty solid neo-pop track. Yeah, I thought it was a yeah exactly. It doesn't. It, it's it's enough of a pivot where it wouldn't really belong in three three. I I don't think or might might have been a little bit here or there, but I like she like it as a as a solid trap and be neo pop track. I really like it. It's like solid everything I like about that. Um, her vocals are fantastic. Tinashe's vocals are incredible in there, and um, I like the beat. I like the flow of it, and it's it's a decent. Overall, good round uh, batch of singles. It's sort of like this week. It's nice, solid um, week of yeah. music, more or less. So moving on, I'll just do plugs really quickly. Audio Face Awards 2021, all of the stuff is on YouTube, 
more or less. Um, check that out at youtube.com slash audio face pod for the um, more or less extra. Become a syndicate 23 member to get the full episode of the audio face awards, the full um, thing. It was a fun extravaganza. And you also get bonus things we're doing in the future, like um, first access to all of our bonus episodes, including the state of music 2022, almost said 2021, which we'll probably record sometime next week um, and then drop it. Um, soon afterwards. And then for the free audience, it'll come out a couple of weeks after that. But um, again, make sure you go to uh, join.syndicate23.co for all of those things. We have a 2022 playlist. It's up. We just need a name for it. So send us a name or um, also go and like it on Spotify so you can keep track of all of our favorite tracks um, in the year 2022. And thank you, Peter, for mastering this episode at Dead Music 666. If you are a musician who is looking for things to be mastered, they are a great um, resource to go to. Reach out to them at Dead Music 666 on Insta.